Today, we're going to visit the very southern tip of Africa to take a look at the Kalahari Red Goat, a breed with ancient roots and a particular knack for thriving in harsh environments. This burly, broad-chested goat is a magnificent specimen, both visually and in the quality of the meat it produces. It got its name from the reddish-brown sands of the Kalahari Desert that stretches over three separate countries, South Africa, Botswana, and Namibia. The red sand that covers most of the desert gets its umber appearance from the iron oxide that coats the top layer of soil. It's in this region where the Kalahari Red was originally bred around 2,000 years ago. It seems that the wide expanse operated in a collective attempt to breed this stout buck. That's an astounding feat when you realize that the Kalahari Desert spans a total of 9,000 square kilometers. It's sparsely populated with a wide variety of people with separate languages and cultures, yet they managed to work together before the use of cell phones and Google. And the ancients sure knew what they were doing. The Kalahari Desert's namesake has a very similar reddish-brown tone to its fur as the desert that it comes from. As lovely as it looks, the value is much more than their outward appearance. Their survival in the vast landscapes is utterly reliant on that red coat of theirs. Since this peculiar colouring offers both protection from the intense glare of the African sun and camouflage from predators. The camouflage that their coats provided significantly reduced attack from carnivores. And the skin beneath the goat's fur is also pigmented. During the harsh heat of the midday sun, most livestock actually lose weight as their bodies work harder to stave off dehydration. And most animals avoid grazing altogether to seek out what little shade the desert offers to conserve energy. But the Kalahari Red's darker skin means that it can continue grazing constantly without overtaxing its system. It takes only the most extreme conditions to have any noticeable effects of this rugged little grazer. Systematically, and through a selection process, where only the kids with the most of this prized reddish coloring and biggest size were separated, the preferred genes were passed along through generations. The result was a thick and silky red-brown coat that is softer than most other goats' bristly fur and an unusually robust, medium-sized goat. You will still find a fair amount of kids with white spots or a lighter shade of red among herds, but they are usually separated for meat instead of breeding. The bucks sport a handsome beard and horns that curl back and around their wide heads. Does have horns too, though much smaller, and they don't have that extra tassel beneath their chins. The Kalahari Red is tough as nails. They can find edible material in even the harshest landscapes. They are incredibly resistant to disease and don't require special care to retain their shiny coats or to keep them healthy. As far as a no-nonsense high meat yielding goat goes, you can't ask for a better option. In the late 90s, there was some disagreement on the Kalahari being classified as its own unique breed, or whether or not it was related to the more common boar and savannah goats in the area. The two looked remarkably similar, but the Kalahari had its unusual colouring and was slightly larger and wider in the chest. But the dispute came to a close in 1998, when DNA tests confirmed that the Kalahari Red had every right to carry its own name. They were not related to their boar and savannah neighbors, but new goat owners take caution. This is not an animal that will appreciate being penned up. Any goat can be a naughty, noisy, and chaotic animal to keep. They make it their business to escape from even the most secure paddocks. And if they can't find a way to sneak out, they'll use pure brute force to break out. But the Kalahari Red won't even bother to try and be sneaky about its escape from confined housing. They'll ram their way out and attack anything in sight if they're kept in tight enclosures. They were bred for thousands of years to thrive in the open air and to graze as they please. If you can give them space, they'll be the easiest goat you've ever had. But cramp them up against each other and you'll have a stubborn and strong problem on your hands. 
but if you have the space and the forage to keep them occupied, you can't ask for a better meat producer. That is what they were bred to be, a high and tender yielding meat goat that's light on your pocket since they just don't need the extra antibiotics or specialized feed that other livestock do. And if African breeds are good at one thing, it's clearing land. Between the Kalahari Red and the Boer Goats, it's hard to say which is more efficient at stripping a plot of earth bare. And not even the trees are safe because these guys can climb just about anything. And if land clearing and meat production aren't what you're after, they're also a good option to crossbreed with other goat breeds to develop disease resistance and hardiness and to increase the size, weight and overall health of your herd. Or if your environment is warm, arid and sparse in vegetation. You'll need to look at tougher and more adaptable breeds to meet your climate requirements. The Kalahari Red is definitely a goat to take a closer look at. Most goats make terrible mothers and abandon their young as soon as they give birth. But the Kalahari Red has a good track record of minding her kids and their fertility and live birth rates clock in well above average but they are not the best option for a milking goat. Kalaharis are meat goats through and through. Does will have plenty of milk for their young, but not much more to spare for you. That's not to say you can't milk them, and the quality of their milk is on par with other dairy goats. They just aren't as productive in that area as those that were bred for that purpose. Ideally, Kalahari Reds like to be among their own kind and free to graze without restriction. So if you have the space, you won't regret it. Click that subscribe button. You don't want to miss any new uploads. And learn about the versatile livestock and fowl that are around the world. You might be surprised to find an animal that is exactly what you're looking for on the other side of the ocean. Leave a like and don't forget to leave your suggestions for interesting breeds that you'd like for us to cover. Until next time, remember that there's no limit to what your land can achieve if you're always adapting and learning.